Hi, my name is uh, Mike Appleby. I am head of technology at the Yale Center for British Art, and I'm here with my colleague, Emmanuel Del Mas Glass, who is a uh, manager of uh, collections data, also at the center. And we're here to talk about museum use cases. Um, so I'm gonna give a brief uh, introduction and run through of some, some basic use cases of IIIF, basically recasting some of the things that the early pre presenters have talked about in terms of uh, museum collections. And then I'll pass the baton to Emmanuel, who will talk about a specific research project that we have underway at the center. So as you've uh, heard and seen this morning, IIIF offers a means of breaking down barriers between silos. And really, it's what that means. It's, it's a way of breaking down barriers between users and content that they'd like to access. Um, for those who are unable to visit our physical spaces, uh, museums such as the center, and I'm sure all the museums represented here, um, provide access to digital images of our collections through discovery interfaces that in many ways replicate the experience of viewing individual objects in the museum. Um, our museums have invested you know, significant time and uh, st staff time and uh, expense in digitizing our collections, whether we're talking about paintings or 3D objects such as sculpture or uh, prints or rare books or other materials. And if we look at examples of online uh, collection interfaces that present uh, high quality images, uh, we can look here at MoMA and Met and Frick. Each of them has a, a, a slightly different modality for presenting those high resolution images. Um, as Tom Kramer said this morning, um, all are different, but all are the same. We're, we're getting at the same goals, but we're using different technologies, different viewers. They have slightly different user interface controls. Um, you basically have to look at each one a little bit carefully as you, as you navigate across these sites. And in some ways, each of these replicates the in-museum experience of viewing a, a single object. You, you get to look at the painting, and you get to lean in and zoom in and see it a bit closer up. But how do viewers, and in particular expert viewers, want to interact with our images? I'd like to cite some key needs um, that were identified in a uh, 2012 in a report commissioned by the Crest Foundation titled Transitioning to a Digital World, Art History, Its Research Centers, and Digital Scholarship. Um, the report's pretty striking. The findings of the report are pretty striking in that um, pretty much every desired feature um, in some way is addressed by IIIF, but I'll just pick out two of them. Um, one is to enable robust image annotation, including embedding video, text, and drawings, and allowing links via URLs for citation within an image and within specific detail areas of an image. So we've already seen some examples of that, of, of, um, of the uh, ability to you know, crop an image and produce a URL that's a, actually a citable link into an image. Um, and we'll look at some more. Uh, and then uh, the, the second key area that this CRESS uh, report uh, identified was just display of images for side-by-side -side comparisons and analyses of works of art. So let me pick that up first. Imagine we're a visitor uh, at, on the Yale Center for British Art website, and we'd like to look at two busts of Alexander Pope that we have in our collection. Um, right now, our, the only way to do this really would be to run two separate searches, open two separate pan zoom viewer windows, and kind of arrange them on your screen in some way that made sense to you, and, and then interact with them. Kind of manageable, you're not leaving our site, so that's great. But now, say you, you look at that bust on the right and you say, oh, that's by Rubiliac, and I know there's another one of those at the V&A. I'd like to bring that into my view as well and look at all, all three. This becomes much, much more difficult, more navigating around, more windows to manage with no relationship really between those windows and those views. And we can multiply this by the number of, of objects that we have in our collections. Uh, here, a sketch of Hadley Castle that's uh, um, in London, and the final painting, which is at Yale, or in this print that I showed earlier, which is based on a Turner painting, which is at the Met. If, it would be natural to want to bring these up side by side and difficult to do. And then assuming that a researcher has collected all of these, these references to images or opened all of these browser windows. They've sort of built the, their own gallery, but how can they, how can they uh, fix that collection? How can they store it? How can they bring it back 
onto their screen later. Um, well, of course, IIIF is an answer to this. Um, and then take that one step further, once you've collected those images, how do I actually, you know, how do I write on them? How do I annotate them? How do I describe what I'm seeing? Um, what's the mechanism for that? And again, IIIF annotation uh, supports open annotation and provides a mechanism for just this. So I want to show you um, some screen captures, and if I'm really brave, I might step out and try to do a, a demo before I hand things over to Emmanuel. But um, here, this is a view of, of Mirador, the image viewer that you've seen a couple of times before with a list of objects, populated with a list of objects from the Yale Center for British Art Collections. Um, and now from this, I can bring up our two Pope busts, portrait busts that, that I had on screen earlier. Um, and I can select individual images from those, those lists and then pan and zoom independently in, to those objects. So multi-up comparative viewer with pan zoom um, and a highly responsive interface. And of course, what we do here with Pope Bus, you can apply equally to paintings and so forth um, throughout our collections. Now, I'd like to move on to another, um, another interesting use case, which kind of moves beyond our immediate collections of art objects. As we've seen today, there are vast, vast archives of publications that are being unlocked by this IIIF technology. Um, and so it's possible to bring together artwork and provenance documentation, art criticism, works of art history, and so forth that are now being made openly available. Um, so here's an example of an exhibition catalog from 1919. It was a sort of first major post-World War I exhibition of a large number of these uh, English watercolors. Um, and so we have a catalog at left that actually happens to have a color reproduction of a painting that we hold at the Yale Center for British Art. And I can, I can bring this up. Uh, the, the image on the left is, is brought up from the Internet Archive. The, 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 um, exhibition catalog was scanned by the Getty and made available through the Internet Archive. Um, and since Mirador is a book viewer, I can actually read the book at left and page through it while keeping the image up at right. Um, and so I can see uh, the, the description in the catalog. I can see a reference to a sale of the painting at Christie's. I can see a, a quote of a contemporary critic's remark on, on the painting. Um, now, IIIF has various means of allowing uh, linkages between works like this, everything from including it in the object uh, metadata as a, as a, a reference to see also this, this work, um, to linking annotations that could be used to say link this page of the catalog back to our, uh, our image object at the Yale Center for British Art. So it's a very flexible uh, uh, framework and will allow, um, allow us to tie together these uh, relevant pieces of documentation with the artwork that we hold in our collections. Another interesting uh, use for uh, the multi-up viewing is, of course, with conservation imagery. So we have an x-ray at right and a painting at left. Um, and this is really being spearheaded by work at the National Gallery of Art um, under the Conser Mellon Funded Conservation Space Grant. Um, and so I just have a screen capture of the conservation space and the annotation tools that are being developed uh, for conservation space. Um, Mirador originally shipped with the ability to draw a, a, a box essentially around an area and annotate it. Um, the conservation space uh, is contributing effort toward providing freehand annotation areas, um, polygons, and so forth, being able to style those areas um, and, and provide um, a kind of a richer set of annotation features that conservators would need in order to um, use these online tools to develop their conservation documentation in the conservation space platform. Um, so we're very interested in that at Yale for a project that uh, kind of marries uh, art, history, art historical research and conservation research that Emmanuel will talk about in one moment. And just one announcement, which is that the center has made available approximately, as of about two weeks ago, made available approximately 30,000 objects uh, in IIIF. So we have uh, manifests available. We have a top-level collection available if anyone wants to harvest our, our, our data. 
And I think we have about on the order of 80,000 images uh, being made available um, as part of this effort. And you'll notice that in our online uh, catalog, we provide a IIIF logo, which indicates that the image is being made available. And clicking on that will launch a, a Mirador instance. So you can actually you know, bring up the multi-up viewer um, from our site. Um, there's a, an extra bit of magic associated with that IIIF logo, and I hope Stu will be, dem yeah, Stu will be de demonstrating it later. So we'll, we'll leave that for after lunch. Um, <laughs> Yes, you can see. Um, and so with that, I think, I think I'll, um, I'm not brave enough to do a live demo, so I will hand it over to you. <laughs>